know what time it is. It's freaking Weiss Fab time. All right, I am a little excited. Uh, I'm gonna unbox this Weiss Fab. I actually got it from Quick Stop Motorsports. Uh, this is for the S14. I actually have an S13, but I use S14 hubs. So this is gonna be the S14 uh, version of the kit. Um, but you'll see how it's actually compatible with the S13. Um, and uh, this is gonna be the V2. Uh, with the uh, lower um, rack relocation on this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and uh, I'm excited. So hopefully I can have enough space on this, de this desk. It's actually not that big. Um, so prior to this, I was actually running um, the uh, PBM knuckles. I actually, they're the welded knuckles. Uh, I actually had them since, oh, four? No, not 2004. Uh, 2014, actually, yeah, I believe I purchased them. I sent, sent them in, got them modified. Uh, it was actually the hotness at the time. Uh, I believe Weiss Fab uh, was pretty new at that time and uh, definitely just wasn't track proven like it is now. All uh, right, so here's the manual for it. That's the first thing that you see when you open this box. Um, so this is pretty neat. I'll get into this a little bit more. Um, if possible, sandblast the subframe. Cut out templates, uh, which are the end of, at the end of the book. Uh, and they give you some Weiss Fab stickers. Definitely probably put them on my car. It's actually really nice. This is probably one of the best manuals I've seen. Um, period. Um, wow, this is like full color. Look at this. I mean, it tells you where to cut. It tells you some of the differences and to contact them uh, for rates and use only. Like, wow. This is a manual. This is pretty cool. Um, and here are the templates that you can cut out here at the back. Hopefully it, my zoom works, praying that works correctly. All right. You know what, so what I'll do is I'll actually take everything out to make it a little easier for you guys to see. Uh, and then we'll go through it there. Otherwise this box is gonna be sort of blocking your view. And it's kind of been kind of lame. Oh, there's a bug in here. All right. So, as you can see, padding. You can see here. I'll also rotate this in this direction so you can kind of take a good look. Um, I do have an uh, uh, above camera that I'm gonna try to uh, edit into here, but I don't know exactly how well it's gonna work, so. Um, for these tie rods, look how long these things are. This is a very long tie rod. Um, it's, it's, the inner, it's the inner and outer tie rod, so that's reasonable. All right, very, everything's very, very nicely wrapped. So you can see this is actual relocation of the rack. Uh, this gets mounted on. We'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, actually gonna be a lot of stuff to take out and to put back. Um, this thing is very, very nicely packed, very well packed. But like I said, it's hard to, hard to show you at this angle. I guess I need a top, a more, uh, more higher quality top angle. Uh, I can just rotate this, man. This it's heavy and it's packed really, really well. Um, so I'll let you in on a little secret. So I opened the bottom of it because it looked like there was a little nick and I wanted to check that before, um, you know, I got to these videos. Sometimes I've, it's actually been like two months since uh, I, uh, since I got this and then I was gonna, wanted to do the video of unboxing it. So I actually just enjoy doing these and this is honestly some of the most fun part. So this for a while, I didn't actually know what this was, but this is uh, to apparently to hold the subframe in place uh, while you're wet cut, when you cut it and weld it. So this is pretty cool.
All right, top hats. I'm running out of space here. Okay. Go on the side here. All right. And we've got the other control arm, lower control arm. Beautiful stuff. Man, this thing's wrapped really nicely. All right, so the last picture here. You can kind of see the last little bits. The Weiss Fab kit. There you go. Really nice wrapping, really great job. I'm really happy actually with this part. Um, there are definitely other options and other things that you can go on. There's a bunch of people making some really high quality parts right now. Um, but uh, this is tried and true and known in the industry. Um, so that's pretty much why I went with it. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, talk to people about what their setups are and uh, work with them and maybe, you know, if they wanna help me out with setups, it's just more commonly used. So, you know, the first rule anybody ever taught me about racing was, you know, do what everybody else is doing uh, because they're doing it for a reason. You can get the, a unique car and do things that are unique, but then you have a lot more R&D work to do. You have to do a lot of research and stuff like that. Um, so it doesn't hurt to stay tried and true. Um, now I'm not going to open all of this, uh, because we don't have all day, <laughs> uh, but, uh, let's go with the knuckle here first and we'll go from there. Um, this is the right side knuckle, uh, and we'll go ahead and just kind of rip this packaging up. Uh, I'm just going to be careful what I sort of unbox because I don't want to lose any parts and pieces. Uh, even though I am going to put everything right back in the box after I'm done. You know, part of the reason I do these videos is sort of a video documentation of um, you know, how, when I take it, uh, unbox it, take it apart, and then I can see if there's anything that I missed or anything uh, stops working or anything like that. I can kind of go back to see, oh, was it like that when I un took it apart, when I unboxed it? So. Uh, This is this is wrapped really well, so uh, don't judge me. Right. Look at that. So one of these one thing that's really cool with these sort of, sort of more modern style uh, knuckles is this is a this is a trail knuckle. Um, this is going to be the right side, so this is on the right side of the car, and if you can see. Uh, where the spindle lines up and where this part lines up here, uh, it adds trail. And what that does is that's mechanical, what I consider mechanical caster. Uh, I guess it's all technically mechanical, but it's caster that's built into the knuckle itself as opposed to extending the tension rods um, for self-steer. And what, I, what always appealed me about these types of setups is that um, it feels like you sort of run out of self steer or the self steer curve feels a little different. Uh, feels a little weird when you're when I'm driving. So I'm hoping that it will give me a constant self steer because it's done at the knuckle and not necessarily uh, using the caster or the tension rods uh, that that's going to sort of change the caster as it rolls over and uh, that types of stuff. So that's one thing I'm really excited about. Um, and you know, you can definitely take a look at the part. You know what I'm going to I'm so excited about this. I'm going to actually come to the camera over here 
even physically take a look at it and see just like all the welds here inside uh, there's probably not enough light for that um, you can see here I'm filming with a GH5 so you can see that it's not very uh, there you go look at that just really neat uh, I am gonna I am gonna point out <laughs> that there's definitely a little bit of overspray on here uh, but other than that I'm not gonna complain too much all right, let's take a look here. Um, I'm trying my best to not lose all this stuff. There's a lot of pieces here. So I'm just gonna stay organized a little bit and maybe I'll just edit this part out or something. Uh, let's take a look. Well, that stopped working. I had a camera, I had a camera up there, uh, but it looked like it stopped working. It didn't even warn me. <laughs> oh, well, uh, let's take a look. Let's be organized. Alrighty. So what I'm gonna do, um, I won't repeat myself. The left side and the right side are pretty much gonna be exactly the same. Um, I'll do the same here. I'll, uh, you can tell which is the left and the right side. I guess this can go either way, huh? Can't it? Nope. Can't. This is the right side. The left side. So since we took off the right side, we're going to stick with the right side. Uh, right side. And we'll take a look at those top hats in just a moment. All right, so... Let's go ahead and take a look at the lower control arm. Another cool feature, uh, you can look at these heim joints too, which are, uh, if you, can, you can see. I, sh I say these things because I shoot in 4K, so uh, a lot of the details will be able to pick up and I'll definitely upload it in 4K 60. Uh, that's really the purpose of it is so you can see the details uh, of when I create these parts, so. This is a pretty, pretty nice piece. Very beefy too. I know it looks like there's, uh, they took out pieces here and it looks a little bit not beefy, but it's really nice. The only, only comment that I gotta say is definitely the overspray. Uh, you know, it doesn't affect performance or anything or the quality of the part, but it's definitely, you know, just noticeable. And pine joints are pretty tight. I call them, I call them pillow balls pillowball joints. So well, here's what's cool is that uh, this actually effectively goes to where your uh, uh, tension rods would attach to. And these go on here and then you can adjust it for the S13 or S14. So that's really, uh, really neat. Obviously this has an adjustment on it itself. Everything's really tight. It's pretty cool. Uh, so that's one of the cool pieces of uh, parts about it. I say cool a lot. Uh, you can take a look at these, uh, you know, the quality of these Heim joints here. Uh, and you can take a look for yourself and you can see. It's a GH5. Yes, I have the new firmware update actually, the uh, 2.6 uh, firmware on it, but it's still, might be just a lot of things to focus on. Uh, so hopefully those that comes up, these, uh, these heim joints come up for you. 
but yeah, they work out pretty well. They look pretty good. I'm just really happy with, uh, you know, just, just the quality of these parts. Uh, you know, these are really the, the best in the industry uh, when it comes for to uh, how often that they're used. Uh, there's definitely other companies, like I said, out there that um, that are, you know, may offer the similar performance, uh, cheaper pricing. Um, but as far as what's widely used, I definitely think Weissfab is widely used across the globe. Um, and that's really my main reasoning of choosing it. There's definitely some uh, other up and, up and coming companies that are uh, gonna give some competition on that. So uh, let's take a look at uh, these top hats. Um, there we go. And this, this, is, this is so much fun. Uh, and every single year. Oh, this year I'm gonna go Weiss Fab. Next year it goes by and, like, oh, I'm gonna do Weiss Fab this year. Finally. I decided to do it. It's interesting, it's actually a different color blue, the top hats. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely a different color blue. Uh, but no complaints for here. Um, these are some really nice top hats. In fact, I actually want to need to install these on the coilovers that I have. Really good coilovers. Wait for that video. That's gonna be a fun video to, to do. Um, so yeah, these uh, so these top hats. Uh, what's really cool about these uh, within Formula D specs uh, it needs to be within. Uh, these are the, the the top bolts that are uh, for where they mount, where the the shock mounts. So this goes up to the top of the shock uh, or coilover, and uh, you need to be within within this these three parts in a circle to be sort of within formula drift spec. So what this does, so the idea is that you move, the way sort of this kit works is you, you move, uh, at least the way I understand it, I should say. Uh, they move, they actually extend this lower control arm. And then when you do that, um, you get more clearance. But when you do that, you get a ton of camber. So this corrects the crazy amount of camber that you have. Uh, with that uh, because if you low extend the lower part and don't extend the top part you're gonna have like negative six or eight degrees of camber and that's Can be unusable Another thing that it does is because like I said earlier it has the trail knuckles. Uh, it can actually not run so much uh, camber and caster uh, To actually have a decent contact patch. So that's one thing really cool about the setup. I have not driven on one uh, My hair they can be a little bit different to drive on uh, but I also, you know, this is to me the more modern and more uh, the direction of where drifting is going. So it makes a lot of sense to go to a trail knuckle style uh, setup uh, with sort of casters in, in, the, in the knuckle. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and uh, put these aside for now. I like to call it wise fab. Like it's very wise. It's a wise decision. I hope. <laughs> All right. So this is the template for the steering rack relocation. That's what both of these items are, with the exception of these tie rods. Um, time joints look pretty good. I'm actually not gonna bother to open them. Um, if you really want to see them, leave me a message in the comments, um, and I can definitely do a video of what these tie rods look like. Um, but I, you know, if you have seen one tie rod, you've pretty much seen them all. Those are obviously longer <laughs> than normal tie rods because of how much it gets spaced out. But uh, this is actually important. I need to look at this because I am actually planning to uh, relocate my rack. Um, Uh, 
packaging is crazy. Oh man, look at that. Look at those welds. Oh, it's beautiful. I just, I love the raw metal look. And that sort of like, uh, you could just see the coloration of the, of the welds. Pretty cool. All right, I have no idea what any of these things are. These look like they go into the rack. Maybe and space them out. Yes, I'm gonna read the instructions. Don't, don't judge me. Still don't have any idea what they do. Um, here's all the equipment. Let's take a look at this here. And so what this plate does is it, like I said, it braces it. Um, Farouk Yugei has actually a really good video of in the installation of one of these. Um, and uh, he talks about sort of what he has to go through and uh, he talks with his welder on uh, how to get him installed here. What is this for? This is to hold the, to clamp down the subframe when you weld it. That's what this is for. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I think that's about it. Um, ooh, that's one thing that we can look at. Okay, they use like a Teflon piece here uh, to not scrape up the rack. That's really cool. I don't know if you could see that. It's like a little like a piece of plastic because uh, I guess when you when you tighten the rack down you know you got to make sure it's like down um, so that's pretty neat uh, so because I've definitely scra scraped up my rack uh, with solid rack rack bushings on there but it's a good thing to have and that rack doesn't move ever so I would recommend having solid rack bushings uh, I think that's it, pretty much it for me uh, thanks again for watching um, you know, if you like the video, like and subscribe. And honestly, I'm pretty new to these videos. Um, so good or bad comments, just let me know uh, what I can do to improve. Um, you know, uh, because you know, it's all a fun learning experience. And I'm also glad to share all these fun parts with you. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.